Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. We're having a look at a, another dead blog, and this is for the Emile Batan. This is a light cruiser that's coming in for France, and it's looking pretty fun. Uh, it's one which has so many different weapons on it, it's kind of hard to keep count. It's going to be a light cruiser for France at rank 4, so just before you get into the battleships where it will be. It's kind of interesting that we haven't had the update yet, and my guess is it'll be this week, but then again, my guess was that it was going to be last week as well. Soon we'll see the economy changes, and also uh, the updates, I'm sure. Let's get into the history of this vehicle. The Emile Batan light cruiser was originally designed as an improved version of the Pluton-class mine layer, with improved firepower by 152mm guns, and a displacement of no more than 5,500 tons. The high speed and cheap ship for laying mines in the enemy control zone, however, due to the weak protection, she was never used in this way. The ship was launched in 1933. In the pre-war period, she made representative cruises and participated in exercises in the Atlantic Ocean. At the beginning of the war, the light cruiser was involved in the evacuation of the Gold Bullion and the escort of transports in the Mediterranean. After the surrender of France and before the start of the Allied invasion in Europe, she was in Fort de France. The ship took an active part in the suppression of German artillery and shelled the positions in the south of France. After the end of the Second World War, the ship did not take more in the fighting, or did not take uh, in more of the fighting. In 1947, she became a training ship on the naval school at Toulon, and in 1951, it was used as the headquarters of the French naval delegation of NATO. Later, in 1961, the ship was decommissioned and also scrapped. So the Emile Batan has some weird weaponry on it, I think it's fair to say. It's very similar in terms of some of the Italian-like cruisers, where it, it just does not have a lot of armor on it, um, but it does have decent mobility, which doesn't mean too much in naval, uh, because most things have pretty much the same mobility. Like, the Emile Batan can go up to 40 knots, or 74 kilometers an hour, which is pretty quick, but it's not, you know, crazy compared to anything else. But the main thing is it has a ton of different weapons on it. So, first of all, you have three triple-mounted sets of 152mm guns. These will be really nice. The turrets themselves look really odd, though, as if like they don't fit the ship properly, um, especially the front ones. Uh, there's something weird about them, as if they were put on afterwards. And then also on top of this, uh, you have four twin barrel 37 millimeter cannons. Now these 37 millimeters for France are a little bit odd because they don't necessarily have a huge fire rate. It's not like a lot of the 37s or 40s that you see later in the war, or like the American or the German ones. Sorry, so that kind of sucks, you know. It's it's not uh, entirely great. Then you've got 25 AA heavy machine guns over the thing. Um, some of them actually being on some of the turrets themselves, uh, basically planted on top of them. And then also you have some 90mm universal guns as well. Uh, so you have all of these different guns which are just all over spattered on this vehicle. And uh, instead of, you know, having kind of like a unified thing, it's kind of just a hodgepodge of everything. And there's a lot of friendships which are like this, because the ones that we're actually getting um, are the ones which survived the war, or fought during the war, and were, let's call them, modernized uh, in the Second World War to add their AA complements, which is good, um, because if we had a bunch of ships which didn't have their AA complements, I think a lot of people would complain, since, you know, they would get uh, hammered by planes over and over again. So the vehicle itself has good uh, firepower. It has good mobility, but it does not have good survivability. Usually these types of machines, I class them as heavy destroyers. And I know they're not heavy destroyers, they're obviously light cruisers, but that's the way I see them. So uh, big, big firepower, decent mobility, but just can't survive shots. So vehicles like this are generally very good against destroyers because destroyers don't have a lot of armor and therefore these things can punch through them with HE or even APCBC and just hammer them, but they're not able to actually take the damage back. So you have to play them in a specific way. There's a lot of vehicles which are like this. Um, a lot of, once again, the, the Italian vehicles, 
the Regolo, the, the Bartolomeo, all of these don't have a ton of armor, but they can really hammer stuff, uh, which is super fun. Even things like the Dido, for example, um, is very similar to this, where it does have more destroyer guns, and but has a ton of them, and also can't really take too many shots. So, those types of vehicles, they're pretty hard to balance, um, because of, you know, the fact that they're a little bit all over the place, but I actually think that generally they're actually pretty fun. Um, I have had a great time playing those machines uh, over time, and uh, since they put a bridge between destroyers and also between cruisers, I think uh, they can actually be pretty fun. If you get mainly destroyer matchmaking, you can do really well, even against some of the better destroyers, uh, like of course the American ones, but if you get put into a lot of cruiser matchmaking, I mean at the end of the day, you are a very light cruiser, and since a lot of other cruisers have decent armor, especially the heavy ones, you won't be able to put out as much damage uh, compared to a lot of other vehicles, and uh, therefore you uh, will just get hammered because you can't take any hits. The French do have a lot of guns which do a lot of damage though, so maybe the Emile Batan will be similar to that, uh, where it will be able to just have a lot of HG filler, be able to just annihilate stuff, and also at the same time, they do show the hydroplane, uh, which this vehicle will have, which will be good as well. The vehicle also has torpedoes on it, um, by the way, just to kind of um, use that as well. I wish, uh, the, I wish the French had different torpedoes. The torpedoes aren't the best, um, but I suppose at least they're better than not uh, having any, um, which uh, I, I suppose, or maybe people just think it's just uh, another ammo rack uh, to be able to, to annihilate uh, the machine from. But this idea of mobility is one which I kind of want to question quite a lot. So one of the big things that happened <clears throat> when the Italians were released in War Thunder, uh, their naval tech tree, the Blue Water one, one of the big selling points was, oh, look, uh, they are very fast. You know, they're very quick, they're very sneaky, and that means that they can get around the place. And that is completely fine. You know, it's, it's really nice to hear that. But when they came into the game, the extra mobility turned out to be like an extra five kilometers an hour, which ain't going to make any difference. Um, it's not something which is really going to... Um, it's not something that's really going to change the battlefield. And what is going to end up happening is you're just going to get donked by uh, whoever is around the place. And that hurt, you know, that, <laughs> that definitely wasn't... Uh, that definitely wasn't something that I was personally happy with because I felt like I was sold a false bit of goods, that I was told that these things were going to be way more mobile than they were and then they just kind of weren't uh, because everything else was very similar um, in its setup. So for me, I'm hoping that going forward, um, I'm, I'm really hoping that going forward there is a little bit more mobility to these things or the guns will be good enough to hold this vehicle in a good standing, because right now it's not going to have a huge lineup because of the start of the tech tree, and also it's going to be one of those vehicles you play a decent amount in order to unlock the battleships. I personally enjoy these types of vehicles, but I understand also why they're frustrating, because positioning is ridiculously important with them, and uh, you need to be able to um, stay away from hits while hammering stuff. As always... Hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Millie Draper, Juan the Panda, Nick R. Kupila, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Merciless Reaper, Orange Tail, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Moxie B. Young, Peter Grayling, Jerry Provolt, Bereen, Alan Hacker, Sem Arslan, Uncle Bean, Derek R., and Lafouche for supporting the channel.